Today I'm going to compare four vintage 50mm prime lenses that you can adapt to the Pen F. Okay, so over time I've collected several, uh, maybe a dozen 50mm lenses uh, in my photography career and uh, I've kind of narrowed it down to these four uh, that I use, you know, pretty regular and, uh, you know, just for casual use. But, uh, you know, there's there's really two reasons. Uh, a is they're, they're built like a tank. They're really good quality. Uh, you won't find this in any modern lens today. And also, uh, they're dirt cheap. So even if I wanted to sell these, um, I wouldn't get much for them. I mean... For example, like this 50 millimeter Nikkor F1.4, I paid 60 bucks for, and that's the most expensive one. Uh, this is the Series E 50 millimeter Nikon, I paid uh, like $40. This uh, Minolta uh, 50 millimeter F1.4, it goes for about you know 50, 60 dollars online, but uh, I got this one for free. It was a hand-me-down from my dad. And uh, this Olympus uh, 50 millimeter, I paid about 30 dollars for. Uh, I got all these on eBay, and I'll put links down below to these lenses. But um, in any case, you know these these are all very very good lenses, and you know it's a good alternative to the uh, 45 millimeter f1.8 from Olympus. Uh, if you don't mind manual focusing, these these are really really good alternative, I think. And um, you know, so I'm going to do a comparison. Um, here here are the specs for these four lenses up here. And, you know, when you look at these, I, I put these specs up here so you can kind of compare these to maybe other lenses you're thinking about. You know, for example, the, the 45mm f1.8 goes for about 250 used. It's, you know, it's about $400 uh, new, but it's, you know, it's lighter, smaller than any of these lenses. And uh, I think it's like 111 grams uh, for the 45 millimeter, so it's a very small lightweight lens. So if that's a priority, you know, just get that lens. But if you don't want to spend that kind of money, I think um, these make an excellent, excellent alternative. So uh, let's let's um, take a look at how these look on the camera. Um, right now, for example, I have the uh, Olympus 50 millimeter. Uh, with the uh, you know the adapter, I think I paid like eighteen dollars for this adapter, uh, together with a uh, lens hood. And you know, without the lens hood, you can see that really it doesn't have doesn't really add much to the camera. It's a very compact lens to begin with. But always get a lens for, hood for these, and I'll get into that in just a minute. But generally, when when you see online lens reviews, they're uh, comparing about four or five things. They're comparing uh, sharpness and uh, they're comparing um, you know contrast, they're looking at vignetting, they're looking at distortion, they're looking at like purple fringing, chromatic aberration. And uh, you know for this review uh, I'm not going to go into a couple of things. One is the vignetting because these four lenses were designed for full-frame cameras and vignetting is a non-issue because you know, the, the Olympus is a crop sensor camera, so there's no vignetting. Uh, they're 50 millimeter primes, and you know, so distortion is not an issue, so I don't need to test for that. And purple fringing to a very, very small degree has some effect on your photography, because um, that can be eliminated easily in post these days. But when you're looking at the very finest detail on the edges, and you eliminate purple fringing, it still does cause just a little bit of blur or you know, it takes a little bit of the quality away from the picture when you have that purple fringing, especially when it's very strong. Um, <clears throat> so I, I do factor that in. I do, I do, I have a scoring system here I'll do at the end. And one other thing I don't test for because all of these lenses will fail miserably is the, uh, the flare. Uh, the coatings on these lenses, you know, back in the seventies, they, they weren't very good to begin with. And, uh, you know, and, and over time, these, these, all these lenses are 30, 40 years old now. Um, you know, the, the coatings have probably been rubbed off, you know, one way or another uh, at this point in time. Just, you know, because you're using that microfiber cloth, etc. 
So uh, if you do take pictures in the sun a lot, uh, that may be an issue for you. Um, meaning direct sunlight, like the sun is peeking directly into the camera, almost straight in, then yeah, that, the, these are going to flare, especially this Olympus, uh, more than the other three. But I don't test for that here because I always use a lens hood. Um, so get a lens hood, get, get a telephoto lens hood. I prefer the metal ones. And uh, because this, these, these lenses are effectively a... Uh, uh, medium range telephoto lens on the Olympus. So you can get the telephoto uh, lenses to get the maximum amount of uh, shading or protection for the lens. And then when you have the lens hood on, you don't need a lens cap anymore either. So, but you can see even with the lens hood on and everything, this is still, you know, very manageable, right? It's not, it's not bad. Um, here's a picture of the four lenses or four cameras with these lenses on it. And over here I have the uh, Nikon attached. Down here I have the uh, Minolta. This is the other Nikon Series E pancake lens. And then this is the, uh, the Olympus lens. And then and, and cosmetically, I think that's the best looking lens too, right? Um, and then this next picture is one with the lens hood on it. Uh, just a little bit closer look. So let's go ahead and go into the uh, computer and take a look at these four uh, lenses side by side in terms of my studio shot. Now, my, I try to eliminate um, some of the variables when, when comparing lenses. So being in, indoors, um, basically I, I took a picture of my watch and a color card. Uh, you know, I'm shooting only from about three feet away. So, you know, pictures are going to look good no matter what. So I took some pictures outside as well to compare, although strictly for the uh, the bokeh. Uh, so I want us to look at uh, the bokeh that these lenses produce because you're, you're buying a fast prime because you want that shallow depth of field, right? Uh, it's definitely a factor. I mean, hopefully people aren't looking at your pictures for the bokeh, but uh, it, it, does, it does affect the image. Uh, overall artistically speaking so we'll look at that and um, and then we'll look at one other thing is the uh, the focusing distance how close can the, the lens actually focus on a subject because some lenses they you know like a macro lens you can you can focus like an inch away right um, but with these lenses you can still get pretty close um, so we'll look we'll look at that and um, see what the images look at because there are differences between these four lenses in terms of focusing distance so um, okay that being said let's go into the computer and compare these side by side okay let's look at these lenses side by side i'm going to start with the lenses wide open so we're now at f14 or f18 accordingly and compare uh, first up, we have the Minolta versus the Olympus wide open. So the Minolta is at f1.4. And I can see that the Olympus definitely has better contrast and possibly is a little bit sharper because it's obvious to me on the Olympus side that these are raised letters whereas over here they look like they could have just been painted on so visually I'd say the Olympus is sharper even over here in the fabric but look at the uh, purple fringing going on here it's much more pronounced on the Minolta than it is the Olympus Let's go over here. Yeah, see how much stronger this ghosting or fringing is? How about the fabric stitching? Yeah, the, the, the lower contrast is really affecting my judgment on sharpness. But I'd have to say the Olympus does look just a hair sharper overall 
Like, look at the six here and the six here and the box and all of the lettering. So, Olympus has a win. Wide open. Okay, and then let me make a note that when I set the white balance, I set the white balance exactly the same for all four. And I use the Minolta as the base. So I set the white balance here with the Minolta lens on. So if there's any difference in color, um, we'll be able to tell that as well. And in this case, I really don't see a lot of difference. This looks a little warmer. Okay. Let's go over to the Nikon F1.4. And at F1.4, Oof, the Minolta clearly wins. Better contrast, a little better sharpness. And the purple fringing doesn't look as bad because its contrast is a little better. Because look at this. This looks pretty strong, this fringing here. And then look at the fabric. The Minolta looks sharper to me. Let's go over to the stitching. And yeah, clearly the Minolta has better contrast and looks like better focus to me. Okay, let's look at the Nikon pancake lens. Oh, right away you can see a difference in color. Look at how much warmer this is or more yellow brown. Um, and it's definitely not as in focus or not as sharp. Tiny bit of blue fringing on this side, but very strong purple fringing on this side, on the Minolta. And then on the face of the watch. Yeah, clearly the, the Minolta is sharper wide open than the Nikon Series E wide open at f1.8. Let's go over here. Look at that. Virtually no purple fringing. That's just a hint of blue. But definitely, you know, this is still here. It's very strong. But then when you look at the fabric, the fabric is sharper, better contrast on Minolta. So the Minolta is a clear winner here. In my eyes. Although I'd say that the contrast isn't bad. Maybe a little better on Nikon here. Okay, let's look at uh, one stop down here. Or two stops, actually, from 1.4. Ooh, yeah, that cleaned up nicely. Look at these lenses now. Look at the contrast. The blacks are blacker. The whites are whiter. Let's see how we did with purple fringing. Yeah, that cleaned up nicely. There's still a line here of purple, but it's not bleeding over so much. And there's very little purple fringing here. It's definitely uh, much more faint. And I think the fabric over here looks sharper and the lettering. So I, I think on contrast, I'd say they were equal, but then I'd give the Olympus here at F2.8 the win on sharpness, however subtle. It's very, very subtle. Like here, I can't really even tell any difference. Okay, let's go to the next one, the Nikon F1.4. And all of the fringing looks pretty much gone, but there's still some purple fringing on the Nikon. Let's look at the stitching. Stitching's very close. I'd give the edge to... Oh, I can't. Yeah, I'd call that a dead heat there. Dead even. How about on the face? Yeah. At f2.8, these two lenses are virtually equal, except for the purple fringing. Look at how strong it is here on the Nikon. All in the speculars. It's even, you can see it on the lettering in the word Timex. So any sharpness is kind of lost with the purple fringing. 
at least at this level. I'm zooming in two to one. But um, yeah, I'll give the edge to Minolta, but they're pretty equal otherwise. Contrast looks good, color looks good. Okay, let's look at the pancake lens, see if it improved any at 2.8. Now the contrast is good, but still it's, you know, it's definitely a warmer color. And it's definitely not as sharp. What is impressive though is the purple fringing, there's none here. But then when you look at the fabric, there's the sharpness is just lacking here. It's lacking in the lettering. So when zoomed in this close, I mean, look at the word chronograph. It's definitely sharper on the uh, Minolta. You know, the scratches here on the face, you can see more scratches versus over here on the Nikon. And then in the stitching, yeah, clearly the Minolta is sharper. Okay, so much for the studio scene. Um, let's try... Let's try 5.6. We'll do one more comparison here. At f5.6, the Minolta versus the Olympus. Pretty close. Detail in the fabric looks the same. There's a little bit more purple fringing on the Minolta, but not bad. Contrast, I'd say, is equal. And if I had to pick it, I'd say the Olympus is still just a hair sharper than the Minolta. So very good showing at f5.6. Let's go to the Nikon. Nikon... Yeah, now we're on the same level. These two look identical to me, whereas before the Olympus looked a little bit sharper. Purple fringing, yeah, gone on that side. Sharpness, equal. On this side, oh, purple fringing about the same. Maybe a little bit more on the Nikon. And then the fabric. Uh, the Minolta looks a little sharper, but side by side, I'd give the Minolta a slight edge on sharpness here at 5.6. But that's probably because of the purple fringing is a little stronger on the, the Nikon. So it's sort of making an illusion that it's not quite as sharp. But, okay, very good, okay. Let's go outside and see how the Olympus does at a distance. So, <clears throat> as you can see, this is the Olympus lens at 1.8 and the same lens at 2.8. And you can see a huge difference when you stop down between the two. The contrast is better down here. Purple fringing is, you can see this line looks very purple, whereas over here it's, the contrast is sort of masking it a little better, and then the branches. But a big improvement in contrast from 1.8 to 2.8, thereby the 2.8 also is looking sharper. Okay, let's stop down to F4. And maybe a slight more improvement in contrast. All the purple fringing is gone. And it, it looks a little sharper. You know, mainly because of the contrast, but it's, it's a little sharper. Okay, and then I'll do a quick look at 5.6. Other than 
I'm getting a little bigger depth of field, so these branches look better. Um, the steeple, pretty much the same as F4. Okay, so these results uh, are very similar to what was done indoors in the studio, um, which is good because I've, I've noticed sometimes lenses perform differently when you're focusing on something really far away. Um, but all four of these lenses uh, were very similar, so um, I won't show you the other four. It's pretty much the same as what happened on this Olympus, as you saw in the studio. Okay, let's take a look at the bokeh wide open and do a quick comparison. And here we have the Olympus 1.8 versus the Minolta 1.4. And clearly, there is a difference. Like, look over here, how busy the bokeh looks over here versus over here on the Minolta. It's a little bit smoother overall. Let's take a look at some other areas. Yeah, here it's very obvious. Look how busy this bokeh looks versus this. And, and I realize we're at F1.8 versus F1.4. Um, that may be part of it. Okay, so let's look at the next lens. This is the Nikon F1.4 versus the Minolta, uh, Olympus. And same thing. It looks a little softer than the Minolta now. The Nikon does. But you can still see a lot of busyness here in the Olympus lens everywhere we go. Okay, let's look at the pancake lens. Ooh, now the pancake lens looks almost identical in terms of bokeh busyness. Maybe a little softer, but I remember that lens, you know, in the studio wasn't as sharp anyway. But uh, overall it's pretty much the same. Let's back out. You know, when you back out like this, you can't really tell any difference. Uh, okay, let's try this at f5.6. Let's see what the bokeh does here. Now both lenses, the Olympus and the Minolta, are now at f5.6, so any depth of field differences should be eliminated. And as a result, even at 5.6, the Olympus still looks busier. Look at this. It's more soap bubble-like over here than it is over here. And... I might attribute this to, you know, obviously the lens design, but if you remember the Olympus and the Nikon Series E were both seven element or six element lenses. And the both the F one point fours were six element lenses. I'm sorry, seven element. So the one point eights were six element, the one point fours were seven element. And maybe that extra element is correcting or softening up this busyness we're seeing in the bokeh. Let's look at the Nikon at f5.6. Yeah, same story. See how this is a little busier and this is a little softer? Okay, and let's go to the Nikon Pancake 1.8 and both lenses are now at f5.6, and yeah, they're pretty close here. Both relatively busier than the 1.4 lenses. See how all this sky peeking through looks busy. So. The 1.4 lenses have smoother bokeh. And that's not necessarily better or worse, it's just the difference in the lens. Um, okay. 
That's outdoors. Let's take a look at the close focusing distance comparison, which would be these four. So this is the Series E Pancake. And this is the closest I could get to the watch. And I'm not comparing sharpness or anything this time. I'm going just strictly at the field of view and how close I can get. This is the Nikon, much closer. And let's look at the Olympus. Uh, maybe a hair closer. Let me back up. But that could be just because I moved the camera slightly. So we'll say the Olympus is slightly closer. And then the Minolta is definitely had to be a little bit further back. So let me uh, put these four together. Compare them side by side. So if you're trying to do some macro work or semi-macro, this is about as close as you can get with any of these lenses. Take a quick look at my notes. Um, and if you if you go back to the beginning of the video of the specs, I actually have the uh, factory specs on what the close focusing distance is. But generally speaking, the Nikon 50 uh, Series E Pancake was about 22 inches from the uh, sensor. Not from the end of the lens, but from the sensor to the subject. Uh, the 50 millimeter 1.4s uh, Nikon was at 17 inches. The Olympus uh, was at 17 inches. And the Minolta was at 18.5 inches. So, uh, and that, that's, that's just a rough measurement I did when I had the camera on the table. But, uh, yeah, it looks like the Minolta, I'm sorry, the Nikon 51.4 and the Olympus. This one looks like it was the closest. Let's see what that is. That was the Olympus, yeah. So the Olympus seems to be able to get closest to the subject versus the uh, other four lenses, especially against the Series E Pancake. Okay, so I try to quantify these numbers. Um you know, subjectively. So let's go over to um, my chart. Where is that? I think it's in here. <clears throat> yeah, so looking at this, you know, I try to give it a number, one to four, four being the best, and and then I added all these numbers up and I came up with a total score for each lens. And you can see wide open, and I highlighted in yellow, you know, the winning lens in each category, even though it ever so slightly. Looks like I made a mistake here. But anyway, uh, looking at this, you can see at f2.8 how all four lenses get pretty close. To each other. Um, you know, ghost and infringing, I, I divided by 10, so instead of giving it a 3, I gave it a 0.3 because I think that really shouldn't have much impact on the overall score, but it but some. So I just gave it that, you know, uh, smaller number. And at f4, all these lenses are definitely close to equal except for the pancake lens but uh, just to sum it up there you go 24.44 27.02 23.8 22.3 so looking at it like this the Olympus is the winner but the other three lenses actually have an ace up their sleeve because those three lenses can 
has a click stop at F2. And the Olympus does not. It goes from 1.8, then it, the next click is at 2.8. I mean, you can kind of hold, you know stop it in between without clicking. But being able to click right at F2 uh, is, is, you know, pretty handy. And I was curious, you know, what about these other three lenses? If I shoot them all at F2 and compare it to the Olympus at F8, how much difference would there be in the rankings? And, uh, you know, I did that, and I'll go back and look at the pictures in a second, but you can see the subtotal at F2, and I did it here, 5.9, 5.8, 5.8, 4.8. You can see that these three lenses are almost equal when you stop the F1.4s down to F2.0. And, in fact, the Minolta at F2 was just a hair better than the other two lenses. So let me go ahead and show you that real quick. I'm sorry this video is really getting long, isn't it? But let's take a look at that real quick. These are the F2 pictures. And we'll compare this to the F1.8. Okay. So here's the Minolta at F2 versus the Olympus at f1.8. And, you know, zoomed out, you can't see anything. But look at that. Look what happens to the Minolta when you just stop it down just a hair. The contrast improves. Um, the sharpness is about the same as it was before, meaning the Olympus still wins out. But if you look at the fabric here, there's very, very little difference. Um... And then looking at the stitching, I'd say the Minolta looks a little better than the Olympus at F2. And just as a reminder, let's look at the Minolta at F1.4 again. Look at the difference between F2 and F1.4. How much better the contrast and sharpness is. It's pretty amazing. See how all of this is gone? over here down to just a simple purple line okay and let's compare the Minolta versus the Nikon uh, 1 4 at f2 the Minolta wins here clearly the Nikon is not as sharp even though it's very subtle Over here in the stitching, actually, the Nikon looks a little bit sharper to me. So that might be just a micro-focusing adjustment. Because on the face, the Minolta looks sharper. The only thing with the Nikon is the purple fringing is pretty strong here compared to the Minolta. It's a very, very distinct purple line here. Okay, and then where's the pancake lens at f2? Here's the pancake lens at f2. Really, that didn't help the pancake lens at all, going from 1.8 to f2. It looks pretty much the same, and the Minolta just crushes it, except in the purple fringing area. This pancake just will not fringe. And looking at the fabric, yeah, you can definitely see, even in the fabric, that the Minolta is sharper. So that was my dilemma was when I um, was trying to choose a single lens to carry with me in terms of the 50 millimeters that I have, which one would I pick? And because of that F2, I, I almost wanted to carry the Minolta with me everywhere because... You know, at f2 and up, uh, all four lenses were pretty similar from 2.8 to f4, except for the, the pancake lens. And uh, shooting at f2 versus f2.8, it's pretty substantial difference relative, you know, if you're going to be shooting anything, any kind of live action. So, for example, if I'm shooting at 
you know, one four hundredth of a second at f two eight, I can be at one eight hundredth of a second at f two, and and uh, you know, freeze that action a little better, uh, a lot better in some cases. Or if I just want to reduce my ISO from eight hundred to four hundred, and there's pretty big difference between those two ISOs as well. Uh, jumping from 800 to 400, especially when you're cropping in. Um, but anyway, you'll have to make that decision for yourself. For me, I decided, you know, because it's smaller, much lighter, I mean almost half the weight as the Minolta, I decided to carry the Olympus 50mm f1.8 and shoot at f1.8, uh, shoot at f2.8 all the time, except when I really need the, the faster speed, I'll shoot at f1.8 and then I can pretty much in post-processing get the contrast and sharpness equivalent to the Minolta uh, lens at f2. So I really don't need to carry the, the heavier Minolta and Nikon f1.4s and I, I definitely am not going to take the 50mm pancake lens. Although it's a it's a wonderful lens on my Nikon D750, it it really didn't perform well on my Olympus, and I attribute that partially to the uh, the pixel density on the Olympus. It seems to be picking up more uh, imperfections in the lens, or the lens is not you know it's just not as sharp with the finer pixel pitch of the uh, Pen F. So. Anyway, that about sums it up. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was so long, but I want to try to be thorough and show you as much as I can. And I'll put links down below to stuff, uh, to the lenses, you know, that you can find on eBay. And uh, in a day or two, I'll try and get the links to these pictures so you can download them or look at them for yourself online and come to your own conclusions. Uh, but... Uh, you know, leave some comments down below, some feedback. I always appreciate that. Um, and I'll try and answer any questions. So uh, subscribe, because uh, I plan to make some more videos like this. Uh, shorter next time, I promise. But um, I appreciate everyone who watches, and hopefully this helps. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.